I got a special treat today. Uh, we are going to go pick up that CR250 shock. And as a matter of fact, the guys at the rebuild place, Tim and Bill, I'll have a link in the prescription. They invited me along uh, to show the assembly process, kind of show what they do down there. So, yeah, it's going to be fun. I'm kind of nervous and excited. Um, always worked on shocks, know how to set them up, know what the little buttons and clickers do, but uh, now we get to see how it does it. So, pretty cool. Okay, so we're here at the shop, and you can see that's the before on the right-hand side. Um, what we got going on here is he's removing the dust cap, which I always thought was threaded on. I had no idea. And he's just using a regular, just a chisel and a small hammer. He's got to break the seal and get her open. There she's opened up. There's a snap ring in there that holds that seal head, which also has a bushing in it. Okay, now it comes, and that's your valve body. The valving of the shock. And no, that's not a special tool for the... Uh, that clothespin. You can just get any clothespin. <laughs> uh, the top of it is shot peen. That nut right there is shot peen over. So what he has to do, you got to grind the end of the shaft just a little bit to buzz them peens off, uh, which he did off camera because they already have this apart. We're just going through to, to show you guys the process. And here we're going to, this is 1985 oil coming out of your shot, guys. So if you haven't had your stuff redone, you should have it redone because this is not helping the performance. So he's going to let that drain. I mean, there was dirt in there. It was grimy. And you'll see there's still a little bit of fluid left in the shock. And Bill here, he said he's been doing this stuff since 1978. Uh, why is he 25? So right now he's removing that nut well, and that's in order to get the uh, valving off first and the next thing that comes off is the seal head which also has the bushing the seal and the o-ring in it This is the old seal head, and that's an internal bump stop for when it uh, comes open or extended. Um, that's a bump stop for the extension that goes on the inside of the uh, inside of the shock. And the main reason that I saw that the shock needed to be done was a bump stop. So here's the new bump stop, and then the dust cap goes on. Then the new seal head, and you can see that that's what they call a bullet, and that just helps slide. It's the same diameter of the shaft, and it slides over and does not damage that internal seal or the o-ring that's on that seal head. Uh, next come the valve body. And then what he's going to do is he's going to lock tight that nut and peen it over. Okay, now he's putting Loctite on it, and I believe he's... I believe it looks like green. He wanted something that was stout. Um, so he's getting that put on, and then he will repeen, I believe, repeen that uh, to lock it after he torques it to 20 foot pounds. Okay. 
here we go, 20 foot pounds. Click. Okay, and in order to prepare the shock body and reservoir for uh, replacing and refilling the oil, you need to get the bladder out of the reservoir first. Uh, so that's what he's working on here, and they can be a real pain in the butt because you've got a steel snap ring and an aluminum body. So he's going to pop that out. And he said that normally, uh, you know, your owner's manual on a UTV, they recommend every 2,500 to 3,000 miles that you get them serviced. Um, obviously, if you're doing riding that's rougher than that, or in water, or in a lot of dust, you're going to need to have that done more often than that. Um, so it's really per application. And here he's just working, working that uh, cover off. It's the actual cover that holds the bladder in there, and it's all one piece, kind of. And there she popped out. And it kind of looks like a diaphragm. You'll see it here in a bit. And there's still some more oil left in the reservoir. So we wanted to show you that too. That it's still that gunky, nasty, black garbage oil. Okay, now going in with the new oil that looks considerably better than the stuff that we took out. And what he's doing is he's filling the resi first, and you'll see that the oil comes through the res reservoir, and it passes through that line and into the main shock body. You can see it just barely coming up. I didn't stay there quite long enough. And he also said that you got to open that clicker, um, your compression clicker, to the slowest setting, so that's allowing your, or I'm sorry, the fastest setting, so that's allowing your fluid to quickly run from the uh, reservoir into the shock body itself. Otherwise it takes forever. And here you can see cleaning up that bladder. And he said that what they do is they uh, pressurize it because it's got that Schrader valve. You, get, you put a hose clamp around there or something to hold it and then you just pressurize it with a little bit of air and dunk it down in the water. Um, and then if it doesn't leak then your uh, bladder is good, which mine was. Which ours was. And then adding a little more of the fluid to the shock body side. There they're showing the uh, parts cleaner. They've got it all set up. So in, in goes the bladder. And it does make a bit of a mess, but um, then you know you're getting enough, right? And he's going in slow because it's actually pushing into the shock body too. Pushing the oil from the reservoir that he's at right now with his hand into the shock body that is clamped into the vise. And what that also does is it helps push out any of the air that's in the system, that's in that reservoir side, the smaller side. Um, when you push that bladder in, it forces all the air that could be in the line and anything to come out through the shock body itself. And now we're going to put the snap ring in that holds that bladder assembly into the shock reservoir. And then what he's going to do is he's going to use a hand pump uh, to pump up that reservoir to just 20 pounds and what that'll do is that will uh, push the bladder up against that snap ring so that it, nothing flies apart so that it's seated correctly and here you can see when he starts pumping it up that reservoir has come out or that um, bladder assembly has come out against that snap ring in order to uh, to seat that and it pushes any air out of the system because you're pressurizing that bladder which is in between the gas and the oil and then now I believe he's just going to be topping it off uh, topping off the actual shock itself the shock body and doesn't that it looks delicious 
I didn't taste any of it. I don't know what flavor it was, but... And now we go in real slow because that dampening assembly, that's all got air in it between those, all those little holes and those shims and stuff. So look at how slow he's working that in there. Uh, just like you do with RC cars. Because if you have any air that's in there, air expands when it gets hot and then it'll get really stiff. So, and then he's just tapping it with a hammer uh, to help knock those bubbles loose. And get all that air out of the out of the bodies of both of them actually because the air on the reservoir will still come up through the top of the shock body itself or tapping just trying to get as much air as possible as you can out of there because those little bubbles like to get trapped you'll see now he's slowly cycling the shock like it would if you were riding it um, and again, we're just chasing out, you know, to ensure that there's no air uh, stuck anywhere in that assembly. And here he's just topping it off with some fluid because as the air comes out, uh, fluid takes its spot. And here he just let out that 20 PSI uh, that we had charging the, so that he can get this seal head in. Otherwise, it won't let it go in because the volume changes with the pressure of the bladder. So you can see he's got he's got to work at it pretty good. It's a tight fit to get it down in there. But once she goes, she goes. And here he's using an actual tool to get it in that last little bit using the dust cap itself uh, kind of as a driver and just using the 200 pound gorilla strengthen them to get her down enough so that you can get that snap ring that holds that seal assembly the seal head assembly in and here we go that's the snap ring that is used to hold that seal assembly in seal head assembly and then that dust cap just presses in and that's all it is is a dust cap for years i thought those little holes there was like you stick a tool in there and that's what uh, you know, screws off and lets the guts out of the shock. Man, I'm glad I didn't... I'm glad that that's not how I worked on stuff, or tried to, so. All right, now what he's going to do is hit the reservoir with a little bit of compressed air, and what that does is forces everything, the whole system, again, just like it did before, but now the whole system is together, it forces the seal head out against the ring. It forces the bladder against its ring. And it does everything that's supposed to be. And now we're just installing that dust cap. And once that's installed, uh, we're ready to add the nitrogen. Okay, here we are, ready to recharge the reservoir with 170 PSI of nitrogen. And it always takes a few times. I worked at a shop. Um, but watch when he, when he pressurizes it, the, the shock comes up a little bit and it actually pressurizes the system enough that it preloads the, the dampening of the shock, which I never knew. But, uh, yeah, well, I was saying it takes a couple of tries for this, um, just to get it through that Schrader valve and into that little bladder. It's such a small, um, capacity that it's taking. And there she took 175 pounds. I want to thank um, Tim and Bill for letting me come along and then kind of tag along and watch them go through the process. It was real interesting. I learned a lot. Um, those guys are doing a lot of work, so if anybody needs their, uh, their advice or their help, I will put the link in the prescription here. Um, they don't do any motorcycle forks, but they'll do any sort of shocks that you have, um, even like Ford Raptor shocks. Um, anything with the, the live dampening, live valving, and uh, UTV pricing, you're anywhere from $65 to 105 bucks. Snowmobile, you're about $45 to $165, depending on what kind of uh, shock it is and what kind of riding you're doing. You know, obviously, that's just kind of middle of the road in a, in a, in a big span, but they will help and, and keep keep you uh, in line and what they got going on. They take photos as they're going to ensure that everything gets put back correctly. And um, 
yeah, just thanks again, Tim and Bill. Um, they really know their shit, and uh, awesome. We're gonna put the uh, we're gonna put the spring back on, and we'll have a complete shock here. All right, got her in the spring compressor, and check this thing out. What a nice piece of equipment. Probably not too cheap, but uh, super safe. You know, it's completely universal and adjustable. Put that clip in, let her come back. Gives her a little tap, snappy snap. Back in business. All right, thanks to my uh, viewers, and thanks to everyone for subscribing. Uh, we'll talk to you soon once we get this shock in. See you soon, guys.